Oh shoot, my essay is due in 10 seconds. By this point, you've probably heard all about AI chatbots, and maybe you've even used one before. In fact, some of this video was actually written by ChatGPT, one of the best trained language learning models. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and following me on Twitch at RealBrandonYet. I do gaming and IRL streams there. Thank you. Now, normally on ChatGPT, if you ask it something controversial, like give me a controversial opinion, it'll decline to answer, but you can reword it a little bit, and instead, if you ask it this, you'll get responses like this and this, and all of this. And although ChatGPT tries to avoid controversial topics, it'll spit out some pretty nasty stuff. Now, all of these responses are from January 2nd, 2023, and it seems like it's been patched by then, but at the time of writing this, January 15th, just two weeks later, I asked it this. And it promptly gave me this. It's not as bad as the Holocaust never happens, but it's still pretty bad. Now imagine if someone were to create a controversial AI bot and use it to promote content online. We already saw the effect of the Russian social media attacks on platforms like Facebook during the 2016 election, so I can only imagine what it would look like when you have a bunch of AI bots spamming a bunch of content and targeted ads on social media sites. One of the main benefits of text generating bots is their ability to save time and effort by automating the process of creating written content. This can be especially useful for tasks such as generating reports, summarizing long articles, or writing repetitive or standard emails. Text generating bots can also be used to generate creative content such as fiction or poetry. In these cases, the bots are typically given a set of prompts or themes to work with and the resulting text is often surprising and thought-provoking. One of the main things that I'm seeing people use it for is for essays. Now, I'm in college, and we have to take a decent amount of English courses. In fact, for our semester-long course that we just had, I talked to about seven or eight other students who said that they used ChatGPT or some other AI bot to help write their essay. And this poses a good question. Should chatbots be allowed in school? Now, obviously, I'm a little biased because I'm a student and I'm not a teacher, but I can think of a lot of positives for why they should be allowed and only one real downside. Chatbots can actually help students write better. They could offer new perspective or new ideas that the student didn't originally consider. A teacher could assign an essay, the student could go home, type in the prompt, go get snacks, and have the essay basically already written for them by the time that they come back. ChatGPT can't add sources or quotes just yet, and it's not perfect, but students could tailor the essay to their own needs after it's outputted. We don't really fully know the effect of chatbots on student development yet, it's a pretty new technology, but there is a valid concern that it will reduce creativity in students. If students never have to use any critical thinking skills to write any of their essays, are they ever really going to develop those skills? If all questions asked to them can be just put into a chatbot and the answer is returned to them in less than 10 seconds, are they just going to blindly follow whatever the chatbot tells them? That seems like a very dangerous outcome, especially considering that AI chatbots can be biased. Language models are a type of neural network that are trained to predict the next word in a sequence of words. They are typically trained on a large dataset of text, such as books or articles, and use the patterns they learn in the training data to make predictions about the likelihood of certain sequences of words. The model's parameters are updated to minimize the difference between the predicted probability distribution and the actual next word in the sequence. Now, generally, there are three types of training models. The first is unsupervised learning. Basically, the goal is to feed it a large amount of data and have it identify trends based on the data. For example, you could sort all of the pictures that look like apples into one category and all of the pictures that look like oranges into another. The second model is supervised learning. All of the data is given a label and a model is created based on those labels to then later identify new data without a label. So you might tell the model, hey, this is an apple and this is an orange. Now identify what this new object is. The third model is reinforcement learning. Imagine this, you've never played chess before. The only way you're able to learn is to study and watch games, and someone behind you will correct you if the move you make is not optimal or not allowed, and will congratulate you when you make a good move. This is reinforcement learning. You're learning a model for the best moves to make based on a set of rules. 
Now there is one more model and it's called self-supervised learning. This is what most language bots use. Basically large amounts of text are fed into the model and the model then creates its own labels based on the original text. It's then run through a supervised learning model because the data has labels now and then those labels are further refined and changed each time the model is run. This is a huge step in AI because while supervised learning models are great, they're not really cost efficient because a human has to manually label every single piece of data. With self-supervised learning, the model creates its own labels and thus can be more cost efficient. Now, this only works because the text being fed into the model is structurally and grammatically correct. If you entered a bunch of middle schoolers' essays, you'd have a much different result. Okay, now let's talk about the creative side of things. When the printing press was first invented, some of the earliest books that were published were adult content, and obviously it sold like crazy and eventually it was banned. But then we had the internet, and again, some of the earliest content on the internet was adult content. I wouldn't be surprised if some of the earliest contents created by AI bots follows a similar pattern. Things like deepfaking make it really easy to make someone say or do something that they didn't actually do, and eventually video generating bots could replace YouTubers like me. This is a massive issue because AI bots already do a lot of things better than humans, like chess, certain factory jobs, and just the raw amount of knowledge that these bots can contain. Is the world going to become a competition to see who has the best imagination? And even then, what if AI bots have a better imagination than humans? Business ideas, optimal financial strategies, best ways to approach an engineering project, these could all be generated by AI bots, and humans would basically have no place in most intellectual matters. In general, the creators of the AI system that generates the medium would be considered the authors of the work and would hold the copyright to the AI-generated medium. However, there are some nuances to this issue. For example, if the AI system is trained on a dataset that includes copyrighted material, the copyright owners of that material may also have rights to the generated medium. Additionally, if the AI system is created by an employee as part of their job, the employer may be considered the copyright owner. In some cases, Laws and court decisions may also play a role in determining who holds the intellectual property rights to AI-generated mediums. It's a complex area of law that is still evolving and being shaped by new cases and legal precedents. This is especially important for people who want to make money off of AI-generated content like artwork, books, stories, etc. For example, if I create a piece of art using someone else's model, who actually owns the rights to that piece? Is it me? Is it the person who created the model? Or is it everyone's art who trained the model? It gets really messy, and I'm sure we'll see some legal cases over this exact issue. So what about plagiarism? AI chatbots do not have the ability to intentionally plagiarize, as they do not have the capacity for intent or motivation. However, it is possible for AI chatbots to generate content that resembles or includes language from other sources without proper attribution. AI chatbots are trained on large data sets of text and use machine learning algorithms to generate new text based on patterns they have learned. This process can sometimes result in the generation of content that resembles or includes language from other sources. So is using an AI bot for an essay plagiarizing? Technically, yes, if you consider the essay generated to be owned by the person who created the model. Otherwise, it's just a collection of a bunch of different text, and in most cases, it would be nearly impossible to tell whether or not something was generated by an AI. Lastly, I want you to think about the most dangerous aspect of AI, and that's the capacity for emotional support. Chatbots are getting freakishly realistic, and while I'm sure a lot of people out there want the genuine feelings of another person, a real human being, AI chatbots could provide unlimited and unwavering emotional support. Instead of talking to a human who has flaws, why not talk to a chatbot who would almost certainly be willing to listen to all of your problems, no matter how many, and not get annoyed or frustrated? Just something to think about.